This video applies to everyone. The purpose of this video is to show you how to put a way of dealing with images, um, what they call a carousel or an image rotator. So this is perfect for people doing portfolio sites. But regardless of what type of site you're doing, um, I want you to do this as part of the project. Unless you think you have a really good reason and you're doing something um, in place of it. But even if you're doing a very practical site, um, you could just have an image gallery of people using whatever practicality it is that you're preaching. Um, okay, so very important on this one because we're about to make some drastic changes to the website is that you back up before you start this one. And just to show you that I'm practicing what I preach, you can see like I'm eight deep in backups here um, for both uh, you know, styles that I'm showing with the header or the uh, navigation in the side panel. So the first thing that we're going to do is go to our page that's appropriate for this. And in most people's cases, it's going to be the portfolio page. Um, ignore the fact that I have this test stuff up here. And in the name of being able to show you a little more here, I'm going to make a little change. And those of you who are dealing with the um, horizontal nav may want to make this change as well. Basically what's happening is this view is so small that our live view, it kicks the navigation over. If we were to view this inside of a browser, we can see what's happening here is it's just, you know, it's about that size inside a Dreamweaver. Now this isn't pretty and this is something um, that you would fix in a more advanced website by using media queries and I showed you how to do that in earlier uh, videos on the W3 site if you're interested in doing that on your website but it's not a requirement but what I'm going to do now is widen this figuratively so that it always takes up a, a wide amount of space so that it can't do this and the simple fix for that is get to our main CSS page and for the nav we are going to add in here with, and we're going to put in a high number like 1500 pixels. We do a save all, test that in the browser. Now you can see what happens is it, no matter how small it gets, it gets lost, which is not great for a phone, but hey, that's, like I said, that's the advanced stuff, or you can tackle it now if you wish. But what's very nice for now is it gives us more space in here. And if that does bother you, you of course can take this out or never put it in in the first place. Okay, so what we're going to do is get to our source code for the portfolio page or whatever page you're putting this on. And we want to get to the section. And all of what is in the section is going to be replaced. So just click on it, make sure you know where it starts and ends because we want to keep the tags. We just want to delete what's inside of there. And then keep the cursor right there, right between the two section tags. And then we're going to go up into the panels. We're going to go to insert. We're going to make sure that bootstrap components are selected here. And then we are going to click on carousel. Now a lot happens here as soon as we click on this. It just wrote a whole bunch of stuff, kind of made a little bit of a mess. So what you want to do right away is a file, save all, click OK. It's going to add all of this stuff to your folder. And once you have the file, save all, and clicked OK, preview that in the browser and you can see um, that with just one click of a button, it did some pretty hefty work for us but it messed up our background color, it changed this header, and, uh, and this is the same whether you have the navigation on the left or you have it on the top, you're gonna experience similar issues. So one um, fix right away that we want to do is we wanna go into our actual portfolio page, the source code, we wanna go up to the top, and we notice that one of the things that it did was it added this link to an external CSS page. Well, the way CSS works, it's cascading, and this comes after our page. So anything that is mentioned on our page but is also mentioned on this page is going to be overridden. That's why some of this stuff is messing up. So the first thing we're going to do is select all that, do a command X, and then or a cut, and then we're going to paste it 
above. Okay, and I'm just cleaning this up as I go to make it easier to troubleshoot. You can see in the preview here that it, it fixed some of our problems, but not all of our problems. Before we go too far, let's just take a quick look at all what has been done into your folder. So find your folder, double click on it, and you can see this is all the stuff that has been added here. There's a CSS folder in here that has the bootstrap CSS. They added an images folder and that's the carousel placeholder image that you see. It, it doesn't really look much like an image. Um, and uh, what's nice is that our images folder, or no, actually, uh, if you haven't done images yet, you wouldn't have one, but uh, we soon will add an images folder here. And I like to start anything that's for assets. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, we do. We have the images underscore or at least I do, and you probably did if you experimented at all. But if not, now would be a good time to add underscore images in here, and that way we can tell the difference between what they added and what we have. Eventually, we'll just get rid of this one. Okay, so first things first. Let's go take a look at what this is doing. And so right now, you can see that and this is the image that I was referring to. It has a um, like a little header in here. And you may want to keep that and experiment it, but if you're doing a portfolio site, definitely get rid of this stuff. We just want to see the work. We don't ever want to put anything over the top of the work. So that's the first thing we're going to do is get rid of some of this stuff. And you can see this little thing right here. The idea behind that is it's supposed to just be some dots that show our work. And I think that our... Um, some of the code that we wrote for list items is what's messing this up. But again, you don't really want anything over the top of your image. You have the arrows here. So we're going to go into the code, get rid of these three things. The first to go will be those little indicator buttons. So you just write up, notice I'm right at the start of section. I skip this first div and I just grab this whole unordered list. Delete that. Every time you make one of these changes, do a file, save all, test it in a browser. It's just a mess if you make a mistake and you don't catch it right away to be able to do a command Z. The next thing we're gonna get rid of is this whole entire div class uh, of caption, including the H5 and the paragraph text. Now we're gonna have to do that for all three sample images that are in there right now. So you can see that I got rid of it for the first one. Now we've got the other two to go. I'm going to look for the same exact thing. Carousel, caption, class, and the div. So go from the start div to the end div. And then one more time here. Before we try experimenting with our own images inside of here, let's first see if we can fix this. Now, I don't expect you to know uh, how to do this level of troubleshooting, but I, I just show you real quick how I found it and uh, And then we'll get on to the fix newer versions of Dreamweaver. You can select any tag um, And just simply hit command E and it will bring up a list of all the CSS that affects it um, So it'll show you the, the first thing is what we wrote for it and our main CSS So it kind of shows us in order and um, what I found was if we go down to the bootstrap um, by clicking here, getting a little deeper in here, we can see that there's this bottom margin that's affecting it. So I started experimenting with that. Uh, but what I found out, the two things really that are messing with us is that they give the font a weight in here. That's why it looks thinner than ours. And then they give a line height. So if we override these two things, that will go a long way to fixing our problem. Now you can't and you, and you don't want to just simply like click on it in here and delete it because it could cause other problems. I mean, this is this whole bootstrap thing where if you want to see craziness, just click on the bootstrap um, CSS right here and look through the whole thing. I mean, there's hundreds, maybe thousands of lines of code in there. So what we want to do is go back to our code and just write it because ours comes after 
try my best to make a long story short here. So in header H1 in our CSS, what we want to do is go in and we want to address the font weight and we want to address the line height. Uh, you would think just font weight of normal would have got us back to normal, but apparently the font that I used in here was a little bit heavier. So try font weight normal, see if that fixes it. If not, try font weight bold. Line height we defined up in the body is two M's. Um, so try line height, two M's. What I found was on the horizontal bar to match my design, I actually had to keep experimenting with this number and I came up with 1.85M. And if you're doing the vertical navigation, uh, font weight, again, try normal, then bold, see which one works best. And then line height of 2Ms seems to work perfect for the uh, vertical navigation. For those of you doing the vertical navigation, it was just the H1 tag that we were targeting. And then notice that there is no padding in here. And for those of you doing the horizontal navigation, it was the header H1 tag that we were targeting. And then we do have to adjust the padding at the top so that it doesn't uh, keep pushing the thing way down. Thing, I meant the header. Um, or, you know, just this H1 tag. So if we go back in here and we actually make that change, take the padding, put that down to zero. Again, this is in my case, you may need a little bit of padding in there. Uh, but we take a look at this. We can see that with enough tweaking, we get it to look exactly the same on the portfolio that it does on the other pages. And one more bit of temporary nastiness that we'll do here is we will go into the source code on our portfolio page and they wrote some of the CSS for this carousel right on the page and you can see one of the things they did here is they give it a background color a gray so just that you're fully aware what what that refers to we'll just go ahead and change it to another obnoxious color to go with all our other obnoxious colors uh, and you can see that's what it's doing so obviously we're gonna have to change that to our background color but our big challenge right now is figuring out what is the ideal size to make our images. And hopefully you get this, that when you take images with a camera, sure, you could, you could crop them all to the same size. But when you're displaying portfolio work and one is a poster that's much taller than it is wider, and then another one is a web design that's typically much wider than it is taller, we've got to come up with a happy medium. Um, as I've been telling you, I have these images that I'll make available to you, or you can use your own images. We're just gonna do a quick little experiment to see what the images look like in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a crazy big one in there, and then I suggest you kind of follow what I'm doing here and put in an image that's approximately 1,000 by 500, and then one that is about 800 by 600. And what we're gonna do is drag this to our images folder. And then we just wanna make sure before we actually publish our website that we delete any of these that we're not using. We just don't want them taking up space. So with a couple images in our underscore images folder, we'll go back into Dreamweaver. What we wanna do is see where their images are and replace them with ours. And the easiest way I found is if you look at the alt here, it says first slide, and then the alt says second slide, and the alt third slide. So we know right before that, this is what we need to change. And if we take and put our underscore in front of images, and then we delete everything from the title all the way back to that forward slash, and then type in the forward slash, it opens up the folder for us and makes it easy to put, to select the image. Then I just double click, puts the image inside. And for the second image, I'm going to put in the thousand by 500, and then the third one, I'll put in the huge image. So if you need to pause this just to make sure that you have the same thing, and you, as a reference, you can see there's a background color I changed to pink and then the, the three images that we put in. We'll do a file save all preview in the browser. Next video, I'm gonna show you some hints for making the optimal size images so that you don't have to worry about things like the arrows changing position 
and having a humongous image in here that we'd have to scroll to view.